All right, so tonight I'm going to talk a little bit about s super macro uh, and try and show people who don't know around this wonderful add-on that um, really opens up a world of possibilities for uh, vanilla WoW programming. And <clears throat> when you install super macro, and um, if you're if you're going to do multiboxing, install my version because I actually have some code changes to the base super macro. You can get my version on my website at uh, furyswipes um, dot wix dot com slash my site. And if you're if you don't care to multibox, you just want to use um, super macro to be a better PvPer, tank, healer than anybody else you can install any version of, of super, super Macro and um, uh, use these lessons I'm about to give you. When you do install Super, install super Macro, um, I'm going to blow up the uh, screen so you can see better. When you do install Super Macro, you can um, access it by typing slash M, enter, or you can access it the old-fashioned way, semi-old-fashioned way, by clicking the macros button? No, the super macro button. This big button on the side. If you click the old macros button here, you get the old set of macros where you have a set of general macros and a set of um, uh, character specific macros. The general macros are shared by every character in your account of which you should only have one if you're a multi-boxer. And uh, the character specific macros are um, only used by your character. But we don't like this interface, so we don't use it. We go to Super Macro. Now, the difference with the Super Macro interface... Oh, man, my lisp is really going to kill you guys tonight. The difference with the Super Macro interface... Um, and I'm just going to call it SM for the rest of the night uh, because I really like S&M. Ha, ha, ha. No, I'm just kidding. That's my wife over there. Monique! Do you like um, do you like S and M? Anyway, all right. So, um, where was I? Yes, S M. Okay. So the big difference with S M is you have this little box over here, and this little box is really special. Let me kill this annihilator really quick. Lava Surger. <sighs> should turn on my multi boxing keys, otherwise, I'm gonna die. Look at my guys, they're so badass. That guy doesn't count. He's a he's a donor warrior, but you know what? I'm gonna have my own warrior suited up in real gear in no time. You taking a bath? All right. Oh, geez. Imps, imps, imps. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Well, we'll be able to talk about Super Macro a lot really soon because I'll be running back. Yeah, I really positioned badly there. This corner in Molten Core is my undoing. It really is. Um, actually, everybody died in a really good spot. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna res. This corner is my undoing. I casual it every single night, and every single night I get burned for casualing it. All right. So where were we? Super macro. All right. So the genius of this little box here. I don't want you to use it normally, all right? Uh, the genius of this little box here is you can make a local function. And local functions look like look like this. I got to keep I got to keep hitting my res button, guys. So um oops. Res 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 you bastards res. You can write 
functions like um, Lua functions. So let's let's write a quick function. Function. Uh, we'll call it. Um, I don't know. Ww and close open and close parens. We'll make this a function to make my warrior do every um, possible uh, AOE thing. All right. So let's start with number one. Um, uh, how about whirlwind? Okay. So cast whirlwind. All right. Uh, what else? Uh, how about um, it, it, I have to be for whirlwind. I have to be in fury berserker stance, right? Um, and we could also cast um, cleave any stance. Um, and here's the thing about being able to write a function. Once you're able to write a function, the sky's the limit. So let's say whirlwind is really important to me. So whirlwind costs 25 rage. I don't want to cast anything if whirlwind is not on cooldown. All right. So I would write if not on cool down whirlwind and um, rage is less than 25 then um, cast whirlwind right that means I'm not doing anything. I'm just trying to cast Whirlwind if Rage is less than 25. Um, else, cast Cleave. If Rage is more than 25, um, I've already cast Whirlwind, and and it's on cooldown. Um, or, you know, I'm waiting to cast Cleave. So, you have if-then-else statements. Um, now, how do you use that? I've written a function. How do I use that? Well, over here, you create a macro. So, click, you say new macro. Oh, man, this is in my way. I really need to res myself. Let me res myself real quick. Uh, tar cuppy. Res cuppy. He's next. Ten seconds. All right. So you create a new account macro or new character macro. I don't have any room for new character macro, so I won't do that. And um, click an icon and say click something, a name for it. Whirlwind. Okay, so. I've entered my extended Lua code, and of course it's gone now because I did it in some other macros window. So I gotta go find it. What macro was up when I entered that code? Each Lua code block is associated with um, with the macro, and you know what? I had no macro selected. I wrote a bunch of extended Lua code, and it all went away uh, as soon as I selected a macro. So. We have our macro. We should have done that first. Um, we're going to pretend to write a function. Function. Whoa, uh, whirlwind. Cast. Whirlwind. End. And then in your actual macro, what you do is you type slash script, which means the next stuff I add to the line is actually meant to be run as Lua code, as a program in the WoW API and that means you can call a function that you wrote just now and the function is ww so if i bring this down here put it as a key and click it it'll say not enough rage that function will continually try to cast that pressing that button will try to cast whirlwind now okay i put whirlwind in there big deal uh, how does that help me todd 
well, you don't just put Warwind in there. You put conditionals. So you can write entire programs, and I'll show you an example. Uh, delete it. Don't quit, dummy. Ooh, I wonder if you guys can see this. Okay, I'm going to make this text really big. Uh, font. Um, we're going to go huge. Bam. Oh, yeah. That's big. That's really big, dude. Oh, man. Um, why am I not seeing the beginning of the line, though? Boink. Oh, I guess I am seeing the beginning of the line. So let's go look at Warrior Single. The function Warrior Single is my function for driving a warrior against a single target. And this type of code here is the exact same type of code you could write and put inside the extended Lua box of your super macro. All right, so a lot of my code calls other um, calls other functions I've written elsewhere in this code. So don't think that you're going to go um, uh, put in your super macro is equipped two-hander, then if equipped two-hander, then arm single like Todd has. I wrote equipped two-hander, the function, all right? Um, I wrote arm single the function so a lot of these are my own tiny little functions that I wrote to do tiny little jobs but let's not focus on that let's focus on um, in fact this font is just too big this is ridiculous uh, let's let's come down <laughs> a little bit all right can you see that I really hope so um, let me rest some more bodies We are playing WoW after all. I'm resing some people. Get up, people. Stop dying, you fools. All right. Um, I'm going to come down to the real meat of the matter. This is how I drive my defensive warrior. You can have all my secrets of how I compartmentalize and codify my incompetence. It's really interesting. All right, let's start. Um, see this line that says end of targeting, do that warrior shit? All, everything above it is just me picking a target. All right, you can spend a lot of lines of code on just picking targets, and I do. Um, targeting is hugely important in raiding, and it's, it's very important that when you have four tanks, that those tanks do their job and take the freaking monsters, <laughs> monsters. <laughs> oh, it sounds so funny when I say it that way. Take the monsters off off of your clothies, um, and they do that by targeting. If if a target is on is not on one of my tanks, then taunt it. You know that kind of stuff. All right, so that happens up there. But down here is the meat of the matter. And I'm going to show you some stuff that I do. First, um, if I'm an off tank, this variable will be set, MB my off tank target. That means I've been assigned this bot. Remember, all this code runs on every single warrior who's clicking the two button. All right, it all, each of them run the same batch of code. Okay, that's the way I've written it. I'll talk about that on another video. But you are going to be writing this code and putting in that little super macro box. All right, um, and I'll show you a better way to live life than putting it in that box. So um, if I'm if I'm a uh, an off tank, I close distance. That's that's a a very complicated um, function I wrote to charge or intercept. Um, then uh, if I have a target, blo there, there's some, there's some multi-boxing stuff there you don't care about. But look, it says if in melee range and you're in combat, then go to defensive stance and cast Blood Rage. 
get some get some uh, rage going. If target is Gurubashi Axe Thrower or Death Knight Captain in Axe and not on cooldown, disarm him. All right. So I disarm two whole things in the whole game of WoW. Um, then my first priority is to cast Shield Slam. And now notice what I do because I can do, I can use um, if statements. If my health percentage is less than 80%, then I'll cast Shield Block. Otherwise, I'll cast my Revenge. However, before that, before that, I have this very interesting function I wrote. Stack casts under armor, five. That means you're going to cast Sunder Armor up till you have up to five stacks on your target. All right? Shield Slam comes first. But after, if Shield Slam is down, you're going to be Sundering up to five times. And this stack cast is written in a clever way. And uh, with the help of another guy on the server, he gave me an idea. Um, the last Sunder Armor is actually cast on a 20 second cooldown so I will refresh the, the stack every 20 seconds and it works for Sunder Armor and it works for Scorch uh, if you're a mage anyway so I'm making decisions here as I go down and here's the way macros work in WoW in WoW these macros play like a program the WoW API when you press a button it will go through your macro line by line and try to do the first thing it comes to all right so if the first thing it comes to is a successful sunder armor mission complete it's done it's done with that program you'll have to press the button again to run the program again and that's why we spam the buttons bap, 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 bap. we're rerunning the program over and over again so you yourself can write um, an if-then program like this. If my health is uh, less than 80%, use shield block, otherwise revenge. Um, if my rage is greater than 50, use heroic strike. If my rage is greater than 40, use shield bash. Um, uh, and here at the end is the most important line of all. The most important line of all that you need in vanilla WoW and that is an attack line a one-way attack line all right if you put attack in a macro each button press is going to turn attack on then attack off attack on attack off attack on attack that's not what you want you want to attack if you're not attacking period that's what you always want and there is nothing in WoW to do that for you except writing this line of code and this line of code depends on a very unpleasant reality of the WoW API and that is you can't tell what current action is you can't tell whether you're using an action or not unless it is assigned to a button it is actually assigned to a button so this is the one nod I give to the WoW API requirement of having something assigned to a button because I hate that I do not want to have to assign actions to buttons it's cheap I don't like it and um, it's 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 a bad programming um, it's, a, it's a bad programming practice in my opinion but right here see that this this button right here Woo, can you see my macro my mouse um, this is slot 72 I put in slot 72 this attack right every single character I have has that attack thing dragged down to slot 72 why well that's because let's go back to our code that's the only way I can do this line of code if not is current action then use action 72 all right so if I were to give you anything to up your game a notch you could do one thing to up your game a notch this is what it would be take this line 
go to uh, your macro. I'm going to blow this guy up here. You're going to go to super macro if you want. And you know, we're not even going to use the extended side. Yeah, we are, because it's just easier. We're just going to say function fight. All right? Function fight. And the only thing we're going to put in there is bam. If not is current action, then use action 72 end. And over here in our macro, what we're going to do is we're going to say cast. Uh, whirlwind cast uh, give me more cleave and then we're gonna say script fight at the end now this is already a huge improvement on anything you could do without super macro alright because now Here's the thing about this macro. If you don't have enough rage to cast whirlwind or cleave, all right, you won't you won't be swinging. You won't necessarily be swinging. However, because that script fight is at the end, even if you don't have enough rage to cast whirlwind or cleave, you will start swinging right away. And that simple function would up any rogues game it would up any paladins game it would up any warriors game or shamans game all right that's all i want to really cover tonight so um just an intro to super macro um i i would be remiss if i didn't tell you guys why i don't like you putting code in the boxes right I, you have these extended boxes I don't want you putting code there. Where I really want you putting code is go find the super macro add-on. All right, mine. It's users. No, it's not. Burr, burr, burr. Public. I keep mine in a public drive um, so that all my computers can see it. Uh, interface add-ons. Okay, this is my interface add-ons directory. You have your own interface add-ons directory. You know where it is. You're savvy. Go find super macros. Super macro right there. Now, oh, my ear it's so bad. All right, so now in the super macro directory, there is going. Oh, there's a lot of stupid files here. So try not to pay too much attention. You probably can't even see this stuff, but there will be a file called smextend.lua smextend.lua now if you're using a fresh super macro build I'm going to res some people res some people suckas if you're using a fresh super macro build smextend.lua is going to be empty just empty all right and what you do is you write your functions in and put them in that file. So see this SM extend? It is 5,200 lines long. I wrote every one of these lines of code. All right. I started with a single function and I added another and another and another. You can get all this. You can get everything I I write online at my website um, and and get and see all of this. Although I haven't updated it in a week. Um, but you're going to start by, I mean, simply writing a simple function like the one I just wrote, fight. All right. And then you're going to add to it. You add a little more. You're going to add a little more. And you're going to call that function. Once, once you've put some code in SM extend, you can call it from your macros. Where'd cupcakes go? Get back up here. So I put some code in SM Extend, and let's go to my test macro. See that? Remember that stack cast function I was showing you? It's available. You just have to put slash script in front of it, and then you can call any function you've written um, in Super Macro. 
in a macro. So there you go. Uh, that's the end of my super macro discussion. You can leave now or hang out and watch me wipe on trash, get ready for Lucifron. Um, I'll pull these imps and we're going to do these imps really good, guaranteed. Let's, um, still a couple people around the corner who aren't rezzed, but we're going to, I'm going to show you how to kill imps without losing anybody by simply being careful. Which, uh, I'm not really. Oh my gosh, world is full of drama right now. It's distracting. Leave world. No more drama. Whew. Okay. It's a bunch of people getting pissy and fighting in world chat. Ooh, that guy is at the imps. There's an imp right next to him. So we're not going to res that guy. That guy dead. He's staying dead. He's a bad soldier. Some of my guys die good soldiers. Some of my guys die bad soldiers. And that guy died a bad soldier. So the number one button, a lot of you know what the number one button is. It is my setup button. And what the, what the number one button does is it may, the mages, they summon water. They summon like 50, 50 water. And they hold it till somebody asks them for water, which they give them automatically. All my guys, when I hit the one key, if they need water, um, randomize a mage in, in the group. Even if you're a guest mage, you better have some water for them. And they will trade with you and expect some water. And if you give them some water, they will say, yes, apply trade. And they'll get their water. But um, if you log out and you go to gym and you come back, all the water disappears and you've got to have everybody freaking um, re-summon water and refill water and blah, blah, blah. And it takes the mages forever to do that. But that's all right. I really like X-Raid status, this add-on that I'm using now to tell me when where the mana's at. And the mana right now, I don't know why Fury Swipes is asking for freaking water. Don't ask for water, Fury Swipes. He's a druid tank. He doesn't need water. I, I used to not let Furious Wipes ask for water, but then he started casting Mark Gift of the Wild, and I thought, all right, he's casting a buff. He needs to drink. I'll have him ask for water, but I still don't know if that was a good move. All right, and so what do I do to reset my raid and close everybody's windows, and no mistake, is I just hit the map key once. And then hit it again. No matter what state everybody's um, situation is, their bags open, bags closed, trading, blah, blah, blah. Resets everything. So it's really great. Really like it. Um, settled on that after a long time of trying. All right, let's kill this um, lava surger. Where's he at? I'll just stand here and wait for the lava surger to kill me. Oh, there he is. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm opening with the alt key down, which only lets the tank swing. And I, I get one or two swings in, solid swings in, uh, with the tank swinging, and then I let the alt key go. And then everybody's DPS in. And I'm going to call my melee over way too late. All right, whatever. Okay, we are ready for... We are ready for... We're ready. We're ready, man. And you know who's going to do it? Ever smile with his... <laughs> ridiculous fire resist oh he's got way too much fire resist all right i'm gonna put some he's at 381 with the totems okay so i'm 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 toning it down a bit um this is ridiculous uh seven defense let's go with something with 10 defense what do we got what do we got we got Seven defense. Everything has seven defense. That's that's not cool, man. Belt of Might, five defense. We'll do, do Belt of Might, and we'll do Stockade Pauldrons. Still at 339, fire resist. That's fine. Okay. Here's what we're going to do. Eversmile is going to go shoot an arrow at the amps. But you know what I'll do? This will work better. 
I'm going to assign some off tank targets. Okay, so those guys will all be tanking. But here's what happens when I assign off tank targets. When I assign off tank targets, healers get assigned to those tanks to um, heal them. I guess it doesn't matter in AoE because the healers are going to be hitting uh, Holy Nova, so that doesn't really matter. Um, but watch this. If I hit the F2 button, everybody gets pre-healed. Renews, regrowths. Shoot that bitch. Come on, man. Moving too slow. Kelsaran hates it when I move so slow. Oh my gosh, I'm losing so many people. No. I've got to make them um, I've got to make them w burn one Nova before they get to the group. I've pulled them many times now and lost nobody and I'm not figuring out what the freaking solution is what the what the magic uh, um, what the magic feather is yeah, everybody wiped oh my gosh that's so bad. Get out of here imps you suckers. Yeah, so I mean, I I either wipe or I kill them all with no losses, and I'm mystified right now. Hmm. All right, here's what I'm going to do. New strategy. I'm going to drop some frost traps at the corner, have them all bunch up, and have them all blow their Novas on Eversmile, who won't take any damage. And then what? Maybe DPS them one by one, but... I'll call ever I'll call everybody forward after they blow one Nova and everybody will go to uh um AOing. That's what I'll do. Pure genius. And we're not gonna really buff up very much here. Cause this might not work and I don't want to waste too much time buffing up. One minute res. Whole raid, one minute. Come on, boys. One minute, yeah, right. Only eight up after one minute. Only nine up after one and a half minutes. Come on, suckers. All right, I'm jumping everybody. Everybody's going to res across. All right, we got a whole bunch trying to get resed here. We're nine up. We're going to be 14 up after this res. 17 up. Oh, that was a big one. Twenty-five up. And you know, it works, but man, I'm really bugged about this whole imp thing. I thought I had it on lockdown. I do not have it on lockdown. Not in any way, shape, or form. It is not on lockdown. What the frick, man? What the frick? It's got to be an easy multi-box way to own this.
39. All right. Took about three and a half minutes. Whatever. Let's go loot these bods. Somebody else is dead. Who's dead? We're only at 39. Who died? Who's, who's, oh, 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 the same guy. Fuck. Okay, hunters, drop your uh, freeze traps. I'm too lazy to move the frost traps down. Freeze traps are in shift four, but frost traps are not. Um, I'm going to do the frost trap thing. What are they in survival? Frost trap. Yep. I'm putting frost trap in shift four for now. And I got to go over here to another window, which is, you know, one of the reasons why I really don't want to deal with changing hunters because I have to go to other windows on other computers. But you know what? That went pretty smooth. I'm going to pat myself on the back. Give me a map. All right. Uh, we got Monterey right here. Boom. Boom. Freeze trap out. A uh, freeze, freeze trap. Frost trap out. Sucker. This is stupid. I only need one frost trap. One frost trap is good enough for all of them. And now I'm going to drop four frost traps. I'm a freaking moron. The others can be freeze traps. Freezing traps. Okay. There's some frost traps. <clears throat> okay. We're going to back up. I'm pulling tanks forward and that's it. Shoot! And now when I run around the corner, what I'll do is I'll um, hit this, hit shield once. Bam! Now we have shields. Look how slow they're going. It's so cute. And one's going back there. All right, and we're going to AOE mode. AOE mode worked. Still 39 up. All right. Hey, you know what? That wasn't actually that bad. We didn't lose anybody. Told you I could do it. Although I've never actually done it that way. You know what? I'm just going to... I don't know what to do about that. Maybe make four of my hunters drop freezing traps and one of my hunter drop a frost traps. That's actually a really good innovation. Now that I think of it, I'm going to make just this guy drop the frost trap and the rest of them drop um, freezing traps that's really clever Todd you are a genius hurts how smart you are if you're so smart why can't you kill Lucifron because you're stupid what there's another level of freezing trap I think this guy doesn't have his Highest level of freezing trap trained over here. Maybe he'll uh, drop the frost trap. <laughs> He's going to have to drop the frost trap now. Um, missing. Uh, where's my hunters? I really got to arrange these windows better so I can, like, all the hunters in a row. That would be much smarter, Todd. You think you're so smart, but you're really not. Uh, all right. This guy's got. He's got L3. Fine. Olympic, Olympic drop a freezing trap, please. Yeah. Good job, Olympic. Good job. Now, now, these imps are on lockdown. They're gonna, whoa, hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up, hold up, hold up. I'm afraid. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, now I know what happened. Now we know why we pulled those imps. Because one of my turds ran up there and died. There's Calypsa. She died. So we have another opportunity. 
to kill imps, but you know what? I'm not going to take that opportunity. What I'm going to do instead is something smarter, and that is not kill imps. Just go into the loose front area, and I'll summon my poor dead soldier who died a very bad soldier. I'm going to make sure loose front and the salamanders are gone. This is always a scary run. <laughs> a scary <laughs> run. Oh my gosh, looking back, it's always just like, whoa, Okay. So, Lucifron next. I'm not afraid of you. Bleh. And this guy who died in the imps, he's just going to run back. That's okay. I've got a mouse key assigned to auto run. And I don't think I'm going to try to solo loose a front. Well, all right. Hang out. I'm going to try to solo loose front one time. And I've got to kill the, a pack of those lava dogs. And we will. Um, but Calypsa is one of my big AoEers, so we got to wait for Calypsa to get back. The reason, well, I won't say the reason she's dead is because she's so good. She's actually pretty undergeared. But um, every every AoE counts when you're burning down the lava dogs. And on this server in uh, in vanilla in in vanilla gaming, um, it acts much differently than live. So I was freaked out until my coach told me uh, why do you keep AOEing after the dogs are dead I'm like because you have to otherwise they pop back up and in in live that's that's actually really the case you have to keep AOEing after the dogs are dead and on this server as soon as those dogs go down you can stop but you can't pull again until you're out of combat you'll be in combat for the additional 15 seconds you would have been AOEing um, if you pull again, all the dogs will come alive again. So that's that's kind of how they modeled, really, um, vanilla Blizz like uh, on this server. It is kind of Blizz like if you do if you don't know it and you pull the next pack. Yeah, it'll be Blizz like. Those dogs are gonna pop right up. But um, we um, we know the secret. Super. Secret, please like feature. And yeah, th this is what I have to do um, when I run back. Um, you got to jump through the window. And so when the reason I'm so resistant to just like running back when I'm in molten core is you have to jump through the window. And I have to jump 40 people through the window if I do a run back. That was Clipsa. And let's summon that Biatch back. And um, we have more world drama over here. Or at least world stupidity. Leave world. And clips uh, take your summon, and here we are. Let's we're gonna do loose front now. So we're gonna we're gonna do a full buff. Building my wall of buffs over here, on the left you can see them coming up. Also here, um, that is an add-on called Buff Watch. There are a lot of add-ons that check buffs. Um, I don't like many of them. I like Buff Watch because it's just hilarious to see them all. And Buff Watch will show them all to you. Ooh, how scared. Somebody looked like they were running off. You always got to check when you're multiboxing. Is somebody running off for real? Or is it just a glitch? When you multibox with a lot of horsepower, um, like the three computers, I'm using three very advanced computers. Uh, it doesn't happen very often but it still happens sometimes when you try to multi box with an old computer or you're doing 40 boxing on even one advanced computer oh it, it happens it happens more than you want it to happen so you gotta you gotta keep an eye out and you have to hit the 
down arrow, which down arrow on my multiboxing system is everybody move backwards. So if you're running, you'll stop. So when I see people running off, I usually instinctively hit the down arrow because uh, I don't want to die. All right, so notice the Lucifron script changed. Lucifron is now not patting back. Um, he won't pat back until I go up there again. And when I go up there again, it's going to be to pull the lava dogs. Core hounds. I should use the I should use the actual jargon. <laughs> oh man, purist purist hate him. Cuz I call everything by some random name. All right, we are at 99%. We don't have full buffs, but we have enough to do lava dogs. So let's do lava dogs. Oh, here they come. I don't want to risk it. So now we got to we can let their script start again and let them pat back. So their script is, is going again and they're coming back. And I'm going to stand up against the wall until they leave. You would think that if you're doing loose front, oh, this guy's separated from the other two guys, I can just go kill him. Well, that's not really how it works. Um, if you do grab him, you can kill him really fast. But Lucifron has started. And you will get the other one. And you will get Lucifron, so you will have to run it. You know, like a real Lucifron raid. Maybe it's beneficial to, you know, have one really dead at the beginning. If you're ready for it, I probably will utilize it in the end. Probably will utilize that strategy when I get more savvy. But I'm not savvy, so utilize it okay so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna have the tanks all swipe and I'm gonna turn on V bars now I'm gonna just AOE down and I'm gonna switch targets to the guy with the most health at at all times oh man this is gonna be this is gonna be close ah made it all right at least I, you know, if I show you nothing else, at least I was able to show you how to burn down the core hounds. And we lost nobody. You usually don't lose anybody on core hounds. And our buff wall got bigger. Well, our buff wall got bigger because um, I only really drop totems in combat, so we got combat totems up. Buff wall looks good. Nobody's saying they're out of anything although you know what I don't have the uh, I don't have the reagent check in the code right now I'm gonna put that back putting up a new set of I'm putting up a new version of the code this week with many improvements and healing rewritten and I really believe the healing is good although you know you'll see a lot of I, I'm I actually have been looking at over healing lately so this this you can't see it but this is overhealing, and the only reason you see a lot of overhealing here is because of uh, uh, the um, Holy Nova. Uh, uh, Holy Nova is a lot of overhealing. Although we're getting greater heals thrown around, and um, I'm thinking that's because uh, we're getting emergency heals tossed around. And that's okay. You you really want that. You want a bit of overhealing when you're AoEing. Okay, let me think about how we do loose fron. Alright, how we do loose fron is we assign tanks. We'll use cupcakes to tank the bows. We'll use cupcakes to tank the bows. And we put a good healer. We'll put the healer assigned to Cuppy Cakes <clears throat> halfway up, halfway up the range. But you know what else I have to do? I have to prioritize decursing, and I have not done that yet. So this is probably going to be a wipe, but that's all right. Um, it'll be a, it'll be a good test. I promise you guys, I'd pull loose front once. I'm going to pull loose front once. Um, so I'm bringing my tanks up so they can. 
see the targets. You have to see the targets to be assigned the targets. Okay, um, actually, you know what? Come on down here. I'm going to have Fury Swipes be the target caller. The reason I want Fury Swipes to be the target caller is because I'm going to finish on the Flame Wakers and the ads. And Fury Swipes is going to be targeting an ad when I finish. So, um, Flame Waker gets Ever Smile. Um, I think Cuppy Cakes is next. Nope, Komal's next. I have to reset. That's all right. F6 just resets it. Flame Waker gets Ever Smile. Other Flame Waker gets Komal. That guy gets Lucifron. And we all are going to be targeting Flame Waker. Do, now, are they going to lose their targets? They're probably going to lose their targets. See that? That's a problem. Cuppy Cake just lost his target. This is actually going to continue to be a problem. Because if he loses his target in my code, he says, I'm not a dedicated tank anymore. And so he no longer behaves as a dedicated tank. He'll just tank the, you know, he'll just assist the, the main focus. So, not really sure what to do about this. Really not good at opening up these fights and controlling all four tanks independently. I'm just not very good at it. I often can't find my mouse. See, I control another tank just by moving my mouse to another window, but in the heat of battle, oftentimes it's very hard to find your mouse on the screen. It disappears. It goes over here. You can't see it. And um, what I need is a big Mickey Mouse hand as my mouse. Oh, hello. Um, that would work. Probably, but... Uh, Ugh. This is not going to go well because I can't assign these tanks. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this the old-fashioned way. I'm going to move refill up. Okay, refill's going to be the midway healer. He's going to be healing um, Cuppy Cakes. Who's actually, who's Cuppy? The dedicated healers are probably still dedicated. The dedicated healers are probably still dedicated. So, Kashmi is dedicated. So, this is going to work anyway. This is going to work fine. Because Kashmi is the dedicated healer. I'll just run her up to midway. And she'll she'll be tossing the heals on Cuppy Cake. And these guys, I'll just turn them around and face the crowd. And, and I will try to turn them around and, like, Taunt the uh, and Cuppy Cake will be the target caller. Get back down there, suckers. And Komal is not turned around. Komal, turn around, you stupid idiot. Okay, Lucifron is going to be. Tank by nobody. All right. Flame Waker. Flame Waker. And here we go. So they should. They should heal pull. And now I'm going to go over to my guys. And everybody should be on one of the Flame Wakers. And I'm supposed to pull him out of range for Doom. And I, I think I might have made it. And once he lays Doom down, I just come back in range. One of the Flame Wakers is almost dead. We're going to get on the next one. Everybody's on that Flame Waker now. Oh, Doom, 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 Doom! Oh... I think everybody got doomed. Everybody got a doom. The The whole point of this fight is to prevent people from getting doomed. And um, I just do that by moving 40 yards out of range. Um, we got five seconds to doom. 
and cache me did not do his job but that's all right let's see if we can save this somehow okay I'm gonna tell everybody to DPS out ever smile you got him DPS out five seconds till doom everybody's gonna get one doom Okay, 14 seconds to doom. I'm way too far. I think he's out of range of doom. See, I've, I've still got to work the ranges. Just move. I moved out of healing range, and I was way too far and stuff. So, I'm a dumbass. That was not even close to a good pull of Lucifron. Ah. <sighs> It's much easier when I have a T3 warrior and a T3 healer helping me. All right. Well, I promise you guys one. Promise you guys one um, try at Lucifron. It was a terrible try. Wow! I almost did the Nax release spirit thing. I have to stop doing that. I'm so used to wiping at Nax, and I just release spirit and run back every single time. So. Do not want to do that in Molten Core. Oh my gosh, you don't want to do that. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Um, hope you can send me questions on Super Macro on my website. That is uh, furyswipes.wix.com slash my site. Um, and later.